Hello everyone, welcome to MBO Studio. Today we have a very special guest. As you know, I'm Laura and this is Stephanie. Hello Stephanie. Hi. How are you today? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. How's it been going these days? Oh, uh, it's been crazy, hasn't it? I feel like the world's lost the plot. Um, just, yeah, it's quite nice to sit and um, have a chat with someone actually. Mm -hmm. Just to let our audience know, uh, Stephanie is a celebrity manicure. She's very professional in her sector and we're just going to talk a little bit about different topics, of course about MBO Safe, the current situation and some tips for the beauty sector. So Steffi, could you tell us a bit more about how you started your path in the beauty industry? Um, yeah, so I've been painting nails as a hobby as a small child since I was about five years old. Um, it wasn't the kind of career path that I thought I'd take, it was always more just like fun. And I started my own company when I was 16 um, doing nails and I entered a couple of competitions in the industry and I ended up winning and yeah, kind of the rest is history. I've been doing photo shoots, movies, TV music gigs and I've got a great agent and yeah, I just get to travel everywhere, well not so much now, but yeah, I've been kind of doing that now for about 10 years. Wow, really glad to hear that, it's really exciting that you get to, to have so many experiences in different places as well. And uh, when traveling and when looking at the different uh, scenarios that you find in each country or with different people, uh, what do you think about the standards of hygiene and safety that are in these different places? Or do you find that people take them into account in this industry? No, I feel like it should be so much more regulated. Like there's certain countries that, you know, are ticked off on keeping on top of stuff like that and making sure everyone's qualified, everyone's insured, tools are clean. And you do find like going some places that actually stand slip quite dramatically. And you know, even being like mobile freelance myself, like you have to be thinking outside of the box to be able to keep on top of your hygiene with your nail kit. It's not always it's just constantly trying to stay ahead of it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I totally agree. Um we, were fi we find uh, that the same happens in other countries. For example, in uh, countries like Poland, there's much more regulation in the industry in terms of which methods of hygiene and safety you need to ensure in your center compared to other countries like, for example, UK, Spain. Um, they have very different regulations or lack of regulations, as we just mentioned. And we just want to set clear, uh, as we are autoclave manufacturers, we just want to set clear that basically there's a difference between uh, sterilization and disinfection. Uh, we want to let people know, because of the lack of regulations and the lack of uh, and the misinformation in the field, we want to let people know that they're not the same, they go hand in hand, and we want to just spread and share the information uh, with the professionals so to ensure higher standards of hygiene and safety and a correct decontamination process. I just want to ask you, why did you uh, select MBO and why, what is the method that you apply for your tools, for example, or for your, all your services that you offer to your clients? Um, so, first of all, I wanted to work with MBO because First of all, they've got pink fun. <laughs> I, I loved the marketing and that kind of drew me in. And then after I kind of got down to the nitty gritty bits of it, I really liked the idea of it could clean so quick in between clients. And obviously infections and diseases have always been an issue. It's always been there, but even more so now. I felt that it would put clients at ease. I felt that it would give me a little bit of an edge having that mm -hmm. like machine now clinic, so I'm really happy with it. Um, I tend to um, disinfect a lot of my tools and wipe them all down, dry them all off, and then I put them in the sterilization pad. And then obviously I clean it um, on the fast cycle at 137 degrees. And then I'll take those pouches with me, bring them to wherever I'm going for a job, because then that client is then seeing me peel them open and knows that it's been kept clean the whole time since it's been out of the Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's actually the perfect decontamination process. The three steps uh, need to be ensured. Of course, we have many uh, users act actually asking us about uh, the first step, which is sometimes washing, and why do uh, is this step needed? Of course, it depends on how the tool was used and w with which products. Some tools have excess of oils or, or residues, right? So it's best to ensure also the safety and, the, and to ensure the long life of your other devices. It's best to clean them first and then put them in your other devices. Um, so yeah. we're really glad that you, that you ensure this for your clients, especially that you have, I, I believe, very demanding clients uh, as they're celebrities, right? Many of them. Yeah, <laughs> keeps more times. <laughs> and have you uh, have you found any added value to your business since you not only use the autoclave but you uh, spread information of this part of your service? Um, yeah, it's had a really positive effect on my business, so I've really noticed it, and I think a lot of my clients have as well. I mean. When we had the first lockdown, I closed my business with, let's say, 60% of capacity and obviously acquired the autoclave during the lockdown. And when I put it out there that I had this autoclave, my tools were clean, tight to high standards, you know, I had all these safety procedures in line, um, this hygiene, that hygiene, words kind of spread like wildfire. And before I knew it, I was operating at like 80, 90% on opening. So I really do think that it can, you know, bulk up your business as well as it does bring a different level of professionalism to the company. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it's something that everyone should consider and I found it's been brilliant. And also it's peace of mind for me as a tech to know that those tools are clean. I don't have to worry about people getting poorly or sick or infections. And you see these like horror stories every time on Facebook of people not cleaning their tools and the infections it can lead to. And I just don't want to be involved in that. I just want to stay nice and clean. <laughs> of course, I totally understand. And there are many cases, for example, now uh, regarding the products that are being used. There's so many options that we can select from in terms of gels uh, and other type of products that are used within in the nail industry, right? Uh, and these yeah. products have many times shown cases or, or derived in cases of allergies and so on. But it's not just only the products, right? In terms of uh, in terms of quality, we should explain the customer which products are we using, which benefits they have. But as well, we think that part of the service is also the tools as they are uh, something that you're using to apply the product, right? So they should know that part of the service is also the standards of hygiene and safety because we believe that they're paying for it, right? Do you find that there is not only an added value, but it should be inside what is the inside the information we provide to the client? Yeah, I think um, information is definitely key. And I've always tried to be completely transparent with my clients. This is the product I'm using. This is why I picked this product. This is why I'm doing this prep, and just letting the client know that they're in good hands. And I think once you know what's going on, you feel much more comfortable anyway, and you put your faith in people a lot more when you know all the details. So I think, yeah, the transparency of it, you know, I'm using this tool to because I want to clean my tools, it does this, I'm using this tool. And yeah, I think if more people did that, it would have a lot more positive impact. Mm hmm. Definitely. Um, regarding, for example, our new campaign, MBO Safe, do you think it, it's a good way to start uh, making people or, or encouraging people to be aware of this topic? Yeah, I think it's great. There's a lot of people that, you know, I get clients coming in all the time like, oh, why, why are you doing that to the cuticle? And, oh, why would you use that spray? Or what's that machine? And it's amazing how many salons aren't teaching people what they're having on their nails or during their treatment. And I explained to them, oh, that's a sanitizer. Oh, that's, you know, that's a stabilizer, that's disinfectant, you know. And it, it just amazes me yeah, that people don't know what they are. So I think it couldn't have come at that time, this campaign. Yes, we also want to spread positiveness and basically uh, a positive mindset, actually, overall in these challenging times. I wanted to ask you a last question. Uh, 
do, what tips do you find important or what tips would you give to your, let's say, colleagues and friends and, and other um, professionals within the industry for these um, thoughts? I think right now, I'm finding a lot of people saying, you know, they're concerned about their, their client bases, like, are they going to be able to retain that after a second lockdown? You know, they're concerned about, are they going to be able to go back to work safely? And I think, um, no matter what step of hygiene you're taking, as long as, as long as you're laying it out, I did a little list of, you know, steps that I was going to do, you know, come in, clients wash their hands, clients put their belongings in a box, clients, you know, put their coats in a bag, like, right? and even though it seems a little bit excessive, it wasn't long before we kind of slipped into a routine, and it did put my clients at ease, and they would then tell their friends and family. So I definitely think, you know, actually get like a physical list that people can see so that they know that you're taking those precautions and safety tips. Um, I think another tip I would say is use this time as a positive, not a negative. Use this time to, you know, reorganise your stock, um, re-display your nail designs, you know, invest in some tools, invest in more hygiene practices. Rearrange your salon so it flows better, like nail clinics. And then I'd also say my third tip would have to be mind your mental health. You know, keep talking to other techs in the industry, other manicurists and um, beauty professionals, because we're all in the same boat, we're all going through the same thing at the same time. So who's better to support you than somebody else feeling the same things? I think if you can just keep talking about how you're feeling, it will make life a lot easier. And then I would also say, if you're having your nails done at home, keep them quite sheer at base, and then just make the tips of the nails quite interesting. So I really like chromes or glitters, um, foils just pressed at the end of the tip, and I just think it makes such a difference. But yet, yeah, it's not going to show the regrowth. Not down nails. Thank you. Thank you very much for your warm words and as well for your time. It's been a pleasure to speak to you as always and we hope we can actually continue having some of these chats that we always have. Uh, you're a lovely person and an even more an even better professional. So thank you very much, Steffi. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining and remember, if you want to be safe and make your clients know that you take their safety into account, Sterilize your tools, follow a good decontamination process, and if you have any questions, you can always write to us. Thank you very much and see you next time.